like, oh jeez. Yes, it's a bit heavy, but that's because it's an Xbox One X. Project Scorpio edition. I paid a grand total of £105 for this faulty item. Comes with everything in the box. Let's head over to the desk and take a look. I'm very excited about this one. Let's go. I'm actually very excited to get into this because I've never owned an Xbox X before. This isn't the newer gen, this is the old X, the one that was 4K, and I'm pretty sure it came out around 2017. I've just done a fact check, and the official release was November 7th, 2017. This is Project Scorpio, and what that means is that it was day one release. The box itself is in great condition. The listing on eBay says this is a faulty Xbox One X Project Scorpio edition. It is boxed with a controller, power lead, HDMI lead, stand and all original documents that came with it. When I came to retest it to sell it, it now has a HDMI fault. It then goes on to say that the picture then either goes completely or some red dots appear for a few seconds and then the picture goes. They even say on the listing that it might be a HDMI controller retimer and that would be my guess as well from looking at videos to do with the Xbox One X. I don't even know if I'll sell this if I manage to fix it. <laughs> it might be worth keeping because I've still got an original Xbox One. So we even have all of the documentation that comes with it. Look at this, everything. This is the box of accessories, I'm gonna guess. Yes, there we go. So we have the Project Scorpio. There we go, look at that. Xbox One controller. Now this actually looks in great condition. Could do with a little bit of a tidy. We have some scuff marks, but overall, yeah, very, very good. We've also got some more booklet stuff, which is good. And here we have the power lead. Then we have the main attraction. Here is the HDMI lead. And we got a stand. I didn't even know this stood up. What? It didn't even register to me that it would stand up after reading on the listing that it would. So the fact I got this for £105 with everything included, even though it's a little bit faulty, I think is a bargain. Let's take a look at the condition of the console itself. Fantastic, honestly. What an incredible machine this is. It's a lot heavier than the other Xboxes, that's for sure. I believe this is where the warranty sticker is for the Xbox One X, just up here. This is the first time I'm taking one of these apart, so I'll be a little bit nervous. How's the HDMI port looking? I'm gonna take my trusty ceramic tweezers. And to be honest with you, the port looks absolutely fine. Looks like there's no issues whatsoever. So I'm now gonna turn the Xbox on with my capture card and just see if we can replicate what the seller was having. So the Xbox turns on. Do we get any image? Yes, we do. Okay, let's go. I don't know, do you, can you see the black? Okay, so there's black lines that appear and you can see it's a little bit faulty, right? So straight away, we can uh, we can see that there is some sort of fault with the Xbox. I'm just gonna wiggle the HDMI cable around. No, even when I take my hands off, so I'm gonna do it now. It makes no difference to the picture whatsoever. And again, hands off. And I'm assuming we're gonna keep seeing the black lines. There we go, so we've got the black lines, the red dots, everything like that. I think the seller of the console was correct in that it's probably a HDMI retimer issue. I'm gonna look at two videos now. I'm gonna look at a video on how to take an Xbox One X apart, and then I'm gonna look at how to remove and replace the Xbox One X HDMI retimer chip. <laughs> I'm not gonna bore you guys with taking apart the console, so I'll be back in a second. And we are pretty much done. I just need to remove the heatsink off the back. Scary because it's the first time that I've been in one of these consoles. So I think that was holding back my uh, my confidence a little bit, you know? And there we go, heat sink off. We're gonna really quickly clear off the thermal paste that's on the APU. I can see my face in it. I'm gonna switch over to my microscope, but before I do, I just wanna show you whereabouts on the board the area is that we're focusing on. So up here, we have the two HDMI ports. We have the in and the out. And here we can see this is the retimer chip that we're gonna be changing today. So let's get over to the microscope. So to start with, we're at the HDMI port and this is the out one. So this is the one where you would plug your HDMI in and all of the connections look very, very, very strong. So I doubt it's gonna be the HDMI port that is at fault. I believe these are the EMI filters below that port. And what we're just gonna do real quick is we have our meter in continuity mode, so where it beeps. As you can hear, we're gonna just ensure that there is a complete path going from one pad to the other on the opposite side. So for example, that's fine. I've seen a few videos where they've measured, uh, especially Micro Mage, big shout out to Micro Mage. He measures the, I think the ohms on this capacitor right here, and also this capacitor where it says C50 right here. Apparently it's not a given method to see if the chip's faulty and I'm not gonna do that today. We're just gonna change out this chip right here, TDP158, the HDMI circuit retimer. I'm 
pretty sure it's called that. So to remove, we're gonna go for a temperature of 480 degrees Celsius. This board is gonna take a lot of heat with an airflow speed of about four to five. Then I'm gonna drop that temperature down to about 420 because I'm gonna put low melt solder on and we should be able to get the new chip on at a lower temperature. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna put a fuel extractor on and let's remove it. I'm nervous about this one. That was quite a clean pull. Now I'm just gonna put some leaded solder on to lower that melting temperature. All right, first off we'll check this side and make sure they're all good. I mean, the solder looks a little bit scarce, I'll be honest. It looks okay and it's all attached. That's good, no bridges as well. Again, I think the soldering looks a little bit scarce, but they're connected. You can see from the far left too, over here, that you know it is quite, quite scarce. But I mean, if they're connected, they're connected, so that's okay. Because of my microscope, it's very difficult to uh, to get round to the other side, but we're looking at the left side and we're looking at the top side as well. And they look, again, okay. I'm just gonna scrape that away and see if I've got a bridge on the far left there. I don't think I do. I will use my multimeter as well to check that just in case. Oh, scrap that. They go to the same pad, so it should be fine. Yeah, you can see top left, they go to the same place. That's okay. Let's just give it one more clean and then we're gonna give it a test. Okay, I'm literally gonna plug in the HDMI cable now and see if we've got an image. Do we have an image, please? We do not, it says no video input. That's okay, let's turn it off and revisit it. I'm not gonna be able to show you this under the camera that we've got here, but I've just noticed that there's a couple of pins on this side. You know the one that I said that I couldn't quite get round to to show you the connections? There's a couple over here that aren't soldered to the board. So I'm gonna just quickly do that now. As you can see, I've put everything back bare minimum again. I'm about to hit the on button. I'm very nervous. Here we go. Console turns on, does the fan spin? Yes, it does. Do we get an image? Please, 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 please. Uh, I'll have to reflow the chip if in the scenario it doesn't work. Come on, let's go, man. Wait, I need to see if we get any, uh, any black bars or anything. I want to slap myself. I also need to turn my headset on and see if I get sound. I do get sound. That's wicked. Everything looks okay. So I don't have 4K on the monitor that I'm playing on now. However, I've got 1080p. And when I go into 4K details, obviously it says that your TV doesn't support 4K. There doesn't seem to be any flickering from what I can see. Everything looks good. I'll be right back to confirm that it works in 4K and then we'll leave it there. But what a result. Uh, clearly, you need to make sure that all the soldering is done around the chip. When it didn't work that first time around, I got the board and I looked at it straight with my bare eyes and that's where I could see that the soldering wasn't as good as what it should be. Okay, so I have it hooked up on the TV downstairs. If I go over to TV and display options, we can clearly see the option for 4K is selected. Thanks for watching.